What's up poker players? Before starting today's vlog, I'd like to make it clear for you guys that my goal by creating Poker Profit channel is to help you to become a better poker player and achieving better results. So to do that throughout this video, let me know what could I do to improve. I want to be able to deliver better and better videos to you through time and with you guys help, I know I'll be able to improve a lot more and I'm doing my best here but I know I'm not perfect. So if you have any suggestion or feedback, Please let me know, I try to read and respond all the comments and I'm not gonna take any more of your time and let's go to the video. Come on. Before starting this session, I have those delicious tacos in a Mexican restaurant right next to Windy City Poker. I start the session with 500, in the first 10 minutes I already get these pocket queens from the cutoff. The guy in my left is straddling every button. I open raise to 20. He calls. The big blind calls as well. So three players see the flop. The flop comes queen 5 8. That's a pretty good welcoming flop. Big blind checks. I see bet to 35 because I have a history with the guy in my left and he knows I'm aggressive and I'm gonna see bet most of the flops. He calls. Big blind folds. Two players see the turn. The turn is a 6 of hearts, I'm gonna keep betting here, I bet strong 100 and he snap calls me. The river is an 8 of hearts, that's one of the best cards in the deck for me, at least for my hand, maybe it can be a scary card for him. I shove all in, he folds and we already take a hand without showdown. He is straddling every time, which is great for me because indirectly I'm getting a great advantage to be the second last one to act yeah, pre-flop and I can definitely take advantage out of that. This hand I get ace-3 offsuit from the big blind. The button raises to 7. He looked like the cool poker player, you know, like that guy that looks like he knows what he's doing and that I think will be open raising too wide from the button when the action gets to him in gap. So I decided to 3-bet here to maybe punish some hands that he open raised that he shouldn't open raise. And in case he calls, I'm gonna just see bet and usually I probably gonna take the pot after C betting. So I think it's okay to 3-bet. He folds, I show the ace of spades. The hand right next to it, I have pocket 7s from the small blind. He raises again to 7. Here I'm gonna 3-bet again. I 3-bet to 27, and then he 4-bets to 80. And that's pretty weird, to be honest, because I don't think he would 4-bet and put that amount of pressure on me if he had aces, kings, queens, even jacks sometimes. So what I think is happening here... Can I see your stack, please? ...is that he thinks I'm aggressive and he's trying to punish me by 4-betting. But with 7s here, after seeing that he has like 220 total in his stack, I'm okay to put all my chips in the pot and hopefully find a pocket pair lower than mine or some ace 5 suited, maybe even a fold. So I decide to shove all in and he snap folds. This hand I'm in the cutoff, button straddle to 10 again, MEP called 10. And with king 10 suited, I'm gonna raise, I raise to 35. I raise small because I like to play in position with this hand. I don't mind him calling or folding, both options are fine to me. He calls, two players see the flop, the flop comes deuce 3-4 rainbow, I miss it completely, he checks, I think I had to see bet here. If I have some weak ace I could think about just checking, but with king high I have to see bet and hope for him to fold. I see bet to 45, he re-raises to 100 and I snap fold. This end I see ace queen from the middle position. Button straddles to 5, 2 players call, before the under the gun raises to 25, and here, by knowing this player is not the tightest guy in the world, I rather 3 betting with ace-queen offsuit, so I 3 bet to 75. 75. He calls, 2 players see the flop, I smash the flop with top 2 pair, he checks, and here I'm gonna see bet small. To 55. Okay. 55. He calls really fast. 55. The turn is a jack of clubs. He checks again. I have the ace of clubs, so there is no nut flush draw in his range. But I decide to keep betting to 100. I really feel like you're bluffing. I know you got a high call, but you're not raising me that much, especially the way you play. Bro, I like you, but I'm not gonna show. Okay. No, yeah, that's I like I mean, I'm you. leaving anyways. We'll see it on his next post. He shows pocket nines and folds. 
A little more than two hours of game. I see this King Jack offsuit. Hijack raises to 10, cut off calls, and I decide to fold this King Jack offsuit. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm doing this. Good play. Actually, I know why I'm doing this. Like, uh, I felt strength from the guy that raised to 10. Against the one who called in the button, I'll be fine to 3 bet. But I think 3 bet in King Jack offsuit from the small blind is too out of line here. It doesn't make so much sense, like I have only $1 invested through betting out of position against a person that I think his range is stronger in every than King Jack offsuit. So as you can see here in my range, I'm gonna still 3 bet more than I call because I'm playing out of position, I'd rather be the aggressor in the hand. But I'm gonna choose to 3 bet against people that I don't think are that strong, which was not the case, or with hands that make sense. To do that like aces kings queens ace king suited ace king offsuit like those hands i want to tend to three batch much more because usually what happens is that people miss the flop including myself so i rather be the aggressor and try to generate full equity against the opponent instead of being passive and letting him be aggressive in those type of situations in this hand for example if i have tens i'm gonna tend to call much more because i felt strength from the guy and you can see that most of the time I, I three bet with tens, but in this case, because of the opponent, I adapted to him trying to exploit his tendencies. And that's what I advise you to do in live poker. Always try to understand the player's tendencies and exploit that somehow. This hand I have ace five suited from the cutoff, button on straddles to ten, middle position and low jack call. I decide to raise to fifty in position against them, button folds. And then the middle position decides to go all in for 110. Low jack folds, and of course I'm gonna call here. $60 more for 180. The board doesn't help me out. He shows jack 10 offsuit and takes the pot. I actually love to see this showdown. Like my range raising 50 out of the cutoff just crashes jack 10 offsuit. I can have ace jack, ace queen, queen jack, king jack. There are so many hands that dominate him. And actually in this hand, I'm making some profit because I have 57% chance of winning the hand. So I'm fine with this play. And as long as I'm making a better decision than my opponent, I'm happy with how the hand runs down. This hand I see pocket queens again. I'm in the under the gun plus 12. 12. I raised What's to 12. What's so funny, Ron? What you <laughs> 12, 12 to play. What'd you say? What's so funny? What you smiling over before you did? No, I'm listening to an hour. Man, I have to say, the name of this guy is Justin. He's one of the main dealers at Windy City Poker. And he's just one of the guys that supported me the most in this channel. So I just want to make it public here, my appreciation for him and for Kirk as well, the owner of Windy City Poker Championship. And actually from everybody from Windy oh, okay. City, the way they treat players is awesome. You really feel like home here. And I really hope they grow more and more because that's what they all deserve. So I raised to 12. The guy in my left calls 12. Small blind calls 12 as well. Seems like he is a good player. I only heard good things about his game. But we rarely play together because he is always in other tables. The flop is 4-5-6 with 2 hearts. I missed the flop, but I still think I'm ahead. Small blind leads out to 20. His effective stack is like 240 total. Can I see your stack please? Thank you man. I'm gonna raise here to charge pocket pairs lower than mine who might have a gut shot or an open-ended or 6-7. I'm still losing to 5-6 suited, all the sets, 7-8 suited. But I think it's better for me to raise than to just call here. So I raise to 68. The guy in my left calls 68, which is a little weird, but I still think I'm ahead of him. And then the small blind goes all in. Tough spot for me here. I have to call 200 for a pot that has 415. So if my equity is around 33%, average this call is profitable i don't need to be winning most of the time so this call is profitable so that makes my decision a little harder because i don't think he would do that with 2-3 he wouldn't call pre-flop with 2-3 if he's a good player or even with 3-7 so he has all the sets sixes fives and fours and he has seven eight and five six and maybe four five suited as well so tough spot for me here but i end up folding <laughs> I'm all in. He can easily have a set of sixes. He's gonna have a straight? Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yes! He's got the low end. Oh, I know. It's hard for me to I got a flush. Small blind says he's had a straight with 2-3 suited. 
which is a horrible call pre-flop to be honest and he ends up losing the hands to flush next hand we play we're in the cutoff button straddle to eight one player call before me i raised to 32 button calls this guy was calling me every time i feel like he always thinks i'm bluffing which i don't mind to be honest because when i have it i can extract a lot hijack also calls so three players see the flop the flop comes ace four eight with one diamond and two spades good flop for us it checks to me i see back to 55 around half of the pot button calls the turn is a three of diamonds it gives me more strength now i have a nut flush draw as well i decide to keep betting here for 105 he snap calls me and then in the river i make my flush so i'm nuts here and the question is how much i'm gonna bet here i decide to bet 200 he snap calls oh I show the nuts and he seems to be really mad with the situation. He said he has two pair. If he really had two pair, I think he made a mistake here. Because with two pair, he should have raised especially in the turn. Because there were two flush draws and when I open raise from the cutoff, I have many, many hands that are suited. And with those hands, I have a chance of being flush draw here. And let's say he has ace four, for example. I'm still playing for the jack and for the diamond here. So we're talking about 12 outs. 12 outs in the river is around 24% of chance. So that's a relevant chance of me hitting my cards and extracting a lot of money from him. If he raises turn, he'll be able to charge from hands like mine. Depending on his sizing, I would probably call and the final result would be the same, me hitting the flush. But it's a way better play in the turn to re-raise than to just call, in my opinion. After that hand, I decide to change table. The table I'm in right now has a lot of chips and looking this table by distance seemed to be a table where players were having a lot of fun and playing way more hands than they should with a big stack. So that's why I get here. First hand, I get king six from the big blind. There's no small blind in this hand. Honestly, I don't remember why. Maybe the small blind was out. Five players limp. I check from the big blind. The flop comes king 7-4 with two hearts. I have top pair. I decide to lead to seven in a pot that has $12. This player in my left calls. He's a really loose player and also is a beginner at the game who tends to do some plays that doesn't make a lot of sense to be honest. I already play a lot of hands with him in this channel. Two players call. They both are in position against me. The turn comes an eight of diamonds. I have a top pair and a gut shot now. I decide to keep betting to 15. I believe there is a big chance I'm still winning here. The guy in my left calls. Two players see the river. The river is a 10 of diamonds. I check. Check. Damn. So fast. And then he bets fast. $60. As I told you guys before, he tends to do some plays that don't make a lot of sense. And here I'm supposed to call 60 for a pot that has 123. So I need to be right 33% of the times. So this call is profitable. I'm really not sure if it is. But there are some flush draws that miss on this flop. And there are some gut shots that miss as well. Fafo, you're gonna show the bluff? Nope. <laughs> Pay for it. Pay for it? Pay for it. Damn. So I decide to call. Good call. Good call. That's he mucks, and as he mucks, there's no reason for me to show, so I muck as well. Winning 550 now, as you can see, is a pretty juicy table. This end I get king 9 offsuit from the button, 3 leapers before me. I decide to punish them by raising to 17. Same player from last hand calls from the big blind. Middle position calls as well, cutoff calls. This table was really loose. A lot of respect. Which I like it, to be honest. The flop comes 8-8-3. Eight, eight, with two clubs, there's a big chance no one hit it, this flop. So after the hand checks to me, I'm gonna see bet here to 35, 50% of the pot. The big blind calls, the other players fold. Then the big blind checks dark before the turn hits. The turn is a uh, ace of spades. I would usually use that ace to keep betting, but because it's him, I just decide to check back. The river is a nine of clubs. I make a pair of nines. He checks again. And here, I decide to bet 40 for value. Because I don't think he will check all the way with aces or eights. And I think he is capable of calling with worse hands than king nine. And that's exactly what happened. 
he calls, I show king 9 and he mucks. Next thing I see, pocket tens. Under the gun plus 1 raises to 10, middle position calls. From the cutoff here, I'm gonna 3 bet to 40. I think 10 is ahead most of the times from the range from the under the gun plus 1 and the middle position. Under the gun plus 1 calls, middle position folds, 2 players see the flop. The flop comes 10, 7, 9 with 2 clubs, I make top set. Under the gun leads out to 25, here this board is too wet for me just to call. So I decide to re-raise to 50, he calls, the turn is a really bad one, 8 of hearts, so jack or 6 make a straight, and then the under the gun leads out to $50. Here is a clear call for me, even if he has the jack or the 6, which I think he has, I'm still playing for the 10, for the 8, for the 7, and for the 9, so I have 10 outs here, 10 outs is about 20% of chance of me hitting, so I'm calling 50 for a pot that has 243, plus the implied odds of taking all his chips in the river, so that's a clear, clear call. I'm just taking my time not to make it so obvious, but I decide to call. The river comes a perfect card, a 9 of diamonds, I make a full house, I'm semi nuts here, I just lose to quads, he bets 75, I put him all in, in the end he decides to fold, and I show my tens, I really like this dude, his name is Hassan. I'm showing you just because you're my friend. <laughs> oh, full house, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't show. Okay. And you would be like... Now you're gonna put his hands in there. There you go, bro. You made the vlog. <laughs> oh, he had me, though. Winning 785. I divided this episode in two parts. Otherwise, it would get too long. I promise you it will worth the wait. Oh my god. 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 Oh my